So the spiritual sound vibration of the mantra can be felt. It can be experienced. It's not theoretical. It's practical. So when we allow the sound vibration to enter into our heart, into our consciousness, we can feel that vibration. And that changes our perspective on everything. The heart becomes purified and the divine love that's in every single person's heart becomes free. Right now, our divine love is like in jail, behind the bars in our heart. It can't come out free. That's why sometimes we're like this. Not always like this. That's why there's anger. There's frustration. That's why there's killing. That's why there's wars. That's why there's exploitation. But the sound vibration of the mantra purifies the heart so that the heart can become free. So the word mantra, the Sanskrit word mantra, means man, mind, tra, to liberate. So it's a sound vibration, a mantra is a spiritual sound vibration that can liberate our consciousness from the material energy that drags us down. And that divine love, which is spiritual, is unleashed. And then we see through the eyes of love. We think through the consciousness of love. We speak the words of love. And we act the actions of love. And people who are in that consciousness, they are the great saints. They're the ones that after thousands of years we still glorify them and still talk about them. And it's not just that one or two great saints can attain this consciousness. This consciousness is for everybody. And it's called Kripa or Karuna, which means mercy. It's the mercy of the Supreme, the Supreme Absolute Truth, which in Sanskrit has many names, but our favorite name is Krishna. And the embodiment of divine love is Sri Krishna and his eternal consort Sri Radha. And we are meant to raise our consciousness to that level so that we can enter into the spiritual realm. Because if we don't raise our consciousness to that level, we won't fit into the spiritual realm. Just like, for example, suppose you have a friend that you went to school with and you took the spiritual path, but he didn't. And now he invites you to a wedding. And at his wedding, everyone's just eating meat items. There's no vegetarian things to eat at all. Everyone's just drinking alcohol, whiskey and beer and wine. There's no fruit juices. Everyone's talking about the, <laughs> the latest football match or politics or the war or the econ economy. No one's talking about yoga. No one's talking about God, about God consciousness. You don't fit in. You just don't fit in. You feel uncomfortable. Okay, I gotta go now. <laughs> you wanna leave. So in the reverse, if we don't attain that spiritual consciousness, we're not going to fit into the spiritual world. So we're meant to do that here. So at the end of our life, we're ready to go to that realm. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to work for it. Nothing good comes easy. The bad comes easy. The heartbreak comes easy, the disappointments comes easy, you get cheated, you lose your money, 
bad deals, your anger, yelling, screaming, that comes easy. Nobody wants those things, and yet they come. Nobody puts out any energy for those things, and yet they come. Because the bad comes easy, but the good never comes easy. The good you have to work for. And that work in San Sanskrit is called sadhana. It's our spiritual practice that we do. And if we don't do our spiritual practice, we're not going to get to the higher levels. Is that logical? Yes. It's logical, isn't it? So, in every branch of yoga, you have your sadhana, your practice. And in this bhakti yoga, the foundation is kirtan, mantra meditation, because the mantra is the most subtle and the most powerful. Because the mantra is not from this world. In Sanskrit, that's called apurusheya, not spoken by mankind not coming from mankind. It's coming from the spiritual realm and that's why it has spiritual potency. Now, the songs that you hear on the radio, they come from mankind. They're of this world. They're material. And they're not helping anybody. They're not raising anybody's consciousness. And after a while, you get bored. And a new song becomes number one. And a year later, the whole top 40 is completely different. <coughs> because everything is temporary. So I used to be a musician. Well, I'm still a musician, I guess. But I, since I was 14, I played in rock bands, blues bands, soul bands. And uh, I used to do all kinds of music play all kinds of different songs. And now I just sing this one song. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And that has power, purification of the heart, to free that divine love that's in everyone's heart. And raises you to the spiritual level of consciousness. How do you know if you're at the spiritual level of consciousness? It's very easy to tell. When you realize that I am pure spirit, and you see yourself as a pure spirit soul, and everything you're doing is spiritual, then you see everyone that same way. You have to see yourself first. And when you see yourself as spirit, you see everyone as spirit. That's how the saints see. They see everyone like that. Therefore, they give their love and their mercy. They don't see bodies. They don't see black and white, male and female, Hindu or Christian, American or Indian. They don't see that. They just see your pure spirit. But when I'm thinking I'm the body, when I'm thinking I'm Dutch or Indian, male or female, black or white. When I see myself that way, I see everybody else the same way too. So you can judge your level of consciousness by how you see everyone else. In Sanskrit, this is called Atmavatmanyatejagat. As I see myself, I see the entire universe. You understand? Clad? So this process of mantra meditation purifies our consciousness so we don't identify with this body. And this body, identifying this as the body is called skin disease. Because that's all you see is the skin. You don't see anything else. And we're identifying everyone by their skin. He has black skin, he has white skin, 
He has Indian skin, he has African skin, he has Dutch skin, this, that. And in this way, we're labeling everybody. And this is what prejudice is all about. This is the cause of all prejudice. This is the cause of bigotry. This is what wars are fought over. This is how millions of people die, killed in wars because of skin disease. Because we're seeing everyone external and we don't see internally because we don't see ourselves that way. Claire? Yeah. So we're offering the process of kirtan that purifies the consciousness. It cleanses the mirror of the heart so that you can actually see your eternal self, see the reflection of your eternal self as Satchit Ananda, eternal spirit, full of knowledge, full of bliss. But right now, the mirror of the heart is so dirty, there's no reflection. We don't see that spirit. So we come to the conclusion that I must be this body. I come to an erroneous conclusion. And everything I do and everything I think is based on this erroneous conclusion. Fortunately, there is a solution, and the solution is chanting these mantras, this kirtan yoga, and other processes of yoga. It's a deep subject matter. But everyone here is, has some connection to yoga, right? Yes? Let me see hands. Right, we're all here because yoga means union with the Supreme, union with the Divine. So we're all interested in that. That's why we're here. This next mantra is very powerful, very popular in Brindavan, the holy place of Brindavan in India. And here are the words. Namaste Shri Radhe. Namaste Shri Radhe. Namaste Shri Sham. Namaste Shri Sham. Namaste Shri Radhe. Namaste Shri Radhe. Namaste Shri Sham. Namaste Shri Sham. Thank you. 
Thank you.